I'm Richie Steffen, and I'm the curator of the Elizabeth Filler Botanical Garden. I uh, am in charge of the special collections and development of the Miller Garden. Uh, the Miller Garden is a small botanical garden on the north end of Seattle, and our garden uh, has a unique collection of uh, unusual woody plants and perennials, along with uh, um, running the educational program Great Plant Picks. Great Plant Picks, it's an awards program that uh, was started by the garden to help people find good, reliable plants for the Pacific Northwest. And we pulled in experts from Western Washington, Western Oregon, and British Columbia around Vancouver to um, uh, help select those plants uh, for us. And it's people who are in nurseries, uh, botanical gardens, um, uh, parks, systems, uh, designers, and they're all uh, looking at how a plant works in the landscape, how it works in the nurseries, uh, and in selecting out what they feel are the most reliable things. All right, well, you're going to be talking to the Hardy Plant Society at its annual meeting. Yes. And tell us a little bit about what your talk is going to be. I'll be speaking on uh, shady characters, and it's plants for the shade garden. And so the Miller Garden is about two-thirds shade and I'm sure that, that one-third that's left has a certain degree of shade but I'm in denial about it. Uh, so uh, we do a lot of shade gardening. We're always looking for things that do well in shade and unusual places. So it's kind of a, a celebration of the wealth of plant material that we can grow here and uh, it, it is amazing the array of plants that we can get and the array of plants we can get from shade uh, uh, and it's a little bit of a showpiece of what we do at the garden and uh, and also what I do at home. Most of my garden at home is shade loving. Uh, there it'll focus on a lot of different cool, interesting ferns. Uh, I'll have some shots of our amazing Japanese hepatica collection Ooh. in there, which is fantastic. Uh, and let's see, yeah, uh, and just all the other little things that we've collected over the years that are really fun and exciting. We, We've done a lot of traveling and we have started to acquire plants from uh, other areas and bring them in. So I'll talk a little bit and show some of the uh, uh, new plants that we brought in from New Zealand. And also uh, we are working on importing in Victorian cultivars from England. Uh, so I'll, I'll uh, chat a little bit about that uh, and show a few uh, uh, slides of those as well. You know, it's an incredible, uh, it's an incredible area to garden. Uh, and as I've traveled around, I, it makes me appreciate our climate even more. Um, uh, you know, there's a lot of places that can grow a lot of things, but uh, there's almost nowhere that can grow as much as what we can. Yeah. I grew up in Maryland, just outside of Washington, D.C., and uh, um, uh, much to my mother's dismay, I moved to Washington State, uh, to Seattle, in 80, 1989. And uh, my parents have come to terms with it, and they accepted that it's a really nice place to come out and vacation in the middle of summer. And have worked in the horticultural industry uh, for for probably 25 years now uh, there. So I've always loved gardening and uh, have always uh, worked in the industry uh, and have been working at botanical gardens. Uh, well, I've been at the Miller Garden now for about 11, for just a little, just shy of 11 years. Uh, uh, but what really turned me on to plants was in high school. I took uh, horticulture uh, in high school and absolutely loved it and have been uh, involved with plants ever since. Well, I think some of my biggest inspirations have been uh, um, working with, it, it's a combination of things. One, it's, it's being able to work with the community uh, in, in the uh, Northwest on there because there's a lot of incredible gardeners that are really inspiring to work with and meet and chat with. Uh, and the travels, it's so interesting to see what other people are doing and then to take those bits of, um, to take bits from other gardens and translate them for here. Uh, and it's just, it, it's very inspiring to see this amazing thing. Well, One of the things that, uh, that is translated into the Northwest are stump races. And stump races are an old Victorian style of gardening. They were mostly all in England, 
and it's uh, it's root masses of trees that are placed in a garden setting and and originally they were done to provide little nooks and crannies to grow unusual ferns uh, um, and they developed into these uh, elaborate gardens that not only have ferns but other woodland plants and that the whole style of gardening after the, the Victorian era almost entirely disappeared and then in the mid 80s Prince Charles built a stumpery and it's probably the first stumpery done in in decades and since then it's really started to gain in popularity um, I had the opportunity to see that garden and then uh, we started uh, trying them out I mean there's one thing that we have here in the Northwest it's stumps and we have great stumps and so we started building them at the Rhododendron Species Botanical Garden the Hardy Fern Foundation that I'm a board member of we put in uh, an enormous stumpery there and uh, some of the Hardy uh, Plant Society members here in Portland have done mini stumperies. Lucy Hardiman uh, and Alfred put in a stumpette and at uh, Nancy Goldman's garden we did a little stump grotto uh, for her, a little fern grotto. Uh, so it's a really fun style of gardening. It uses wood, it uses uh, ferns and other woodland plants and just creates this interesting naturalistic uh, landscape. So, and there will be a few photos of my uh, my stumpery at home and some of the other ones in the lecture. You know, you, you want a good, well-drained uh, soil with a lot of organic matter. So, it's a very composty uh, soil. You can take just a basic soil uh, that is around um, uh, a, a basic soil mix, like a three-way soil, and just add in some extra compost or organic matter and just work it in around the soil. I love detail. And so, uh, both at, at the Miller Garden and at home, um, I love doing detail gardening. And so, we do a lot of troughs and a lot of miniature landscapes uh, where we're working with a lot of dwarf plants tucked in with stones and, and uh, pieces of wood and interesting shaped plants to create a, a kind of a, a mini landscape that's part of a bigger landscape. Uh, um, so. Detail gardening, I think, is fun. Japanese uh, gardening, where they have, in Japan, they, they've made, um, uh, it is inspiration to see how they have selected out cultivars uh, oh. and little nuances in plants. Uh, yeah. um, one of my favorite groups of ferns are pyrosias, which are these, uh, also called felt ferns, because the new growth comes out very felty uh, looking. And in Japan, they pick out crested forms, and there's some that have a little cresting and a lot of cresting, variegated forms. There's ones with twisted fronds, and it's just, it's phenomenal. Their attention to, to those details and little differences and where they've taken that in, in cultivar. So I find that completely inspiring. And that's what I'd really love to get into, is doing a little bit more of that uh, as well, and, and fussing around with, uh, with plants and doing a little bit of breeding work. I find that uh, that in horticulture it's always evolving for me, and uh, I would have to say, being in the field for 25 years, I don't find it boring at all. And there's always something new around the uh, around the corner, so it's it's completely exciting to me. Your travels have taken you to New Zealand, England, Japan, Chile, uh, Costa Rica. Um, uh, Germany. I did a, a fern tour in Germany uh, there. Uh, some traveling around throughout the U.S. as well, looking at plants in the wild. Costa Rica was the most tropical place that I was ever at, and uh, which was interesting. You know, tropical uh, climates are like an amazing world. It's a whole palette of plants that I know nothing about. Uh, and I'd, I would be really interested in going to some more tropical places because I feel um, delightfully lost there. Uh, you know, you go somewhere else and you know what the plants are, you have a guess of what they are, but in, in the tropics, it's just like I have no clue as to what that is. And it's so exciting to me to try to figure out what in the world that is and why it's there and what it's doing.